Well, welcome to Modeling Time with me, Brian Vanna. I'm back at the bench with another project. Um, I recently put up a video mentioning about a big project coming up, but in the meantime, before I can get to that, I want to get back into weathering. Um, I want to understand it and what I was doing wrong before and approach it differently. Um, I had mentioned in earlier videos that I like the results of weathering, but I don't like the process. And I still don't like the process, but I want to learn to enjoy it and get the results that I'm imagining. Um, one of the reasons I stopped weathering is because I couldn't get the results that I was envisioning. I watched numerous, I mean numerous videos on weathering and techniques and, and stuff like that. and. I just couldn't get the results. I tried all those weathering solutions from AK and MIG and stuff and I couldn't get the results that they were getting out of them. I don't know if I was missing a prep process or, or something like that, but that's one of the things that most um, people showing how they do weathering, they don't show you the prep, what they're doing before they start applying the weathering. They just come in and you know they break away from the painted model and come back and then they put a wash on well is there something they do before they put that wash on um i've noticed some um night shift is pretty good about showing everything and explaining stuff um and i remember seeing in one of his videos that he puts a um he wets the area down before he puts the wash on so it will you know run down the seams or around the rivets and stuff but he doesn't flood it, it's just kind of moist. So that's something I think that I was missing. I don't know, but I'm gonna use my own mixes, um, go back to the old school way before all these companies came out with pre-mixed stuff. And it's not that I don't like what they're doing, I just don't feel like ordering it. You know, I, there's so much product out there and you feel like, oh, I've gotta order this, I gotta order the whole line to do all this. I don't know what to order, what not to order. Um, and just spend a crap ton of money on stuff that I may not even use. So I'm going to go back to the old school way of I have a whole bunch of artist oils um, and I'm going to try those. I got pigments. I always used pigments before and I felt like I was cheating using pig, pig, pigments. Um, maybe not cheating but maybe I felt like I was using pigments as a crutch because I couldn't get the results using paint. So I'm going to give it a try again and uh, see which way it goes. So for my first cars, I chose gondolas. Gondolas are always good cars to start with because they usually are fairly chipped up and beat up and stuff. I'm not going to beat it up. I'm not going to melt the sides and put it on a barbecue and melt it and all that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm fine with not having bulged sides and stuff. What I want to do is I want to just give it the good look of a gondola, you know, some rust spots, um, chip paint, and, and, and weathered paint. So I'm going to give that a try. And these are the old Walther's, um, not the old, but the, the Walther's train line, I think. They come in the white box with the blue and red um, lettering on it. And it's a good um, kit to start with. It's, they're fairly cheap, I guess. I mean, I guess in today's standard. 20 some dollars is cheap. <laughs> they, these really only should be by maybe $12, but it is what it is. There's nothing you can do about it. So the first thing I did is these were decorated for Sioux line, so I stripped them in 91% in isopropyl alcohol. They've got everything molded on them. They've got the, the grab irons molded on, they've got the ladders molded on, they got all the end details molded on, and of course a separate brake wheel. I'm not going to change that. Um, the bottoms, you know, I pulled those apart, took the trucks off, and uh, everything got grit blasted. Then I went back and I cleaned up all of the flash on the uh, parts. There's a molding, um, what do they call that? The, um, uh, I guess you just call it flash. Um, it comes up, so I scrape all that off uh, along the bottom edges in the, in the stirrups uh, and such. So this car is all ready for paint. And, and, and stuff so the and the I've got two of them painted so let me put the the uh, camera over at the workbench or the paint bench and we'll get two more cars painted
All right, folks, so I'm at the paint bench here, and uh, my um, booth, the, the fan and light, the switch connection is on the fritz, so you might see the light go up and down as the connection is dying, and then come right back up again. Right now, it's working fine. So hopefully with all the noise that's over here, you can hear me. I'll try to speak up a little bit louder. Mm -hmm. So as I mentioned in the um, uh, first portion of this video, I'm not going to be buying the, um, the chipping solutions and the, and the uh, paints and all that stuff from the, the AK sets or the, uh, or the MIG sets and stuff. I'm going to go the old school way and try to do it all myself. I'm actually looking forward to this to see how it turns out. I'm going to try, try a few different um, techniques. Uh, actually, I'm going to probably try most all of them. Um, I'm squinting because I can't see good without my glasses, and my other glasses are on the other workbench. These are my up-close glasses. <clears throat> so, I'm going to do the hairspray chipping. I'm going to try the salt chipping. I'm going to try sponge chipping. And I'm going to try um, my hand at possibly paintbrush chipping. That is the one that I probably probably will fail horribly on but I've watched tons of videos on it so you know if they can do it on the internet we can do it ourselves right <laughs> I'm just kidding <clears throat> excuse me I just had lunch so a bit of a frog in my throat there <clears throat> so my preferred paint is to me a paint I love this stuff it goes on smooth it's forgiving it, it thins great it's wonderful I'm also trying two other paints that so far I really, really like. One is the, the AK 3rd Gen Acrylics, and the other is the AK Real Colors. Now what I like about the Real Colors is you can mix these with Tamiya. So they're compatible with Tamiya, and you can thin them with my preferred thinner, the Mr. Leveling Thinner. I like this stuff a lot. You, it works great with Tamiya. It works great with True Color. So my top coat preferred colors are Tamiya and I do like True Color. There are some colors in True Color I didn't like. Um, like for instance on the um, Chicago Northwestern, I didn't like the green. It was too day glow looking for me. So I use that. I use the True Color green as a light primer and then I used uh, the Tamiya um, to me, an X5 green as a top coat color, and it's perfect for Chicago Northwestern. <clears throat> so, all these companies put out their own chipping color. Now, when I say chipping color, I'm talking about the color that's going to show through when you chip your top coat paint off. And it's typically a dark chocolate brown. And I'm thinking, I can just mix that myself. So, using Tamiya paints this is the color <clears throat> I don't know if you can see it really well in the camera to me it looks kind of black but it's a dark chocolate brown to get that I use one part um, Tamiya XF9 Hull Red I use one part Tamiya XF24 dark gray and I use one part Tamiya Gloss Black. <clears throat> now that's what gives this sheen a little bit, you know, it's not a flat sheen, but it's a little bit more of a, uh, I would say a satin sheen, is that Gloss Black. So it's one to one to one. <clears throat> and to mix those, get your cup out let me see if I can we can do the mixing here you gotta put my glasses on now and I've already got my squeegees or my pipettes that I used so let me clean them out a little bit there's a gray Ooh. There's the black. 
black all over me. There we go. And there's the red. All right, so shake these up good. They've already been shaken, but just get them wiggled a bit more. So we're going to use one part whole red. So one part is a full squeeze and release. So there's that one. We got one part gray. So that comes up to just about a half a teaspoon. So this should come up to one teaspoon. Just about. Now when mixing these colors, it doesn't matter if you match them perfectly all the time. You're, you're definitely going to get this out of it. Whether it's a little bit lighter, or a little bit redder, or a little bit darker, or a little bit browner, or whatever. And then one part. Black. Then I use my Tamiya paint stirrer. <laughs> I like Tamiya stuff. And I'll just mix all that up. The gray comes through first. And it comes into a really nice chocolate brown. Now that's three parts of paint. So to thin that, I'm going to use one part of the Mr. Leveling Thinner, maybe a little bit more than one part. There's one, and maybe about a half or a quarter. Typically when I'm doing my, my top coat painting, I will do um, proper measurements of paint. But for this one, the one and a quarter to one and a half thinning works really really well. We'll mix that up real good. Alright. Let's put this over here. Let's get this lined up with the booth. Maybe I can zoom in a little bit. I don't know if this is going to help or not, but I want you to be able to maybe see what's going on. Okay. So, I use an Iwata HP-C that's been modified. I have this different um, back end on it, barrel on the end, so I can adjust the needle, but I never use that. <laughs> it's just there. Um, so, I use an HPC. I shoot my my um, Tamiya paints at 20 PSI so if you watch the gauge when I press it down it'll go to 20 PSI huh? so it settles out at about 20 PSI that works well for me so I'm gonna paint using I always wear a mask or at least I try to always wear a mask I need to clean the filter out actually I need to get a new filter for this thing all right, so we'll do one of these first. Almost forgot, I like to use gloves too because I don't like to paint my hands all up. So I got my glove on. Oh, it'd be nice if I put paint in the cup. Paint might come out if I put paint in the cup. And I'm just going to paint.
we'll just paint one whole model here and then I'll go off camera and do the other model. And now I'm just painting the ribs. When I paint, I want to make sure that the paint goes on wet and not dry. Alright, so that takes care of the, uh, the undercarriage there. Okay, this piece isn't really all that important to paint the chipping color, but since I'm doing the whole thing anyway, I just went it because the bottom is going to be black, but it's going to be so dirty that you wouldn't see whether it was black or, or this chipping color. So now I'm going to paint the car.
All right, so I got the bottom of the car painted and the sides, and I got to flip it over and uh, and do the uh, the inside. All right, so that takes care of doing the gondola. So now I'm gonna let that dry. I'll go ahead and get this one done off camera as well as, as this piece, and we'll move on to the next step. All right, so I've got all the models painted, and now it's time to go clean the airbrush. And uh, this is my method of cleaning. So I dump the excess paint out, Clean the cup out. And I got lacquer thinner. Clean the cup. I'll only show this once during the painting process. Wipe all the excess out. Back flush it. Pull the needle out. Dump the excess out. Wipe the needle off. Put my Pinky over the nozzle, my index finger on the trigger, and lacquer thinner down the barrel. And back flush it. A little uh, dentic um, uh, tooth uh, cleaner. Clean out the, the pathway to the nozzle. Clean the cap off, or the crown off, and that's it. Put the 
needle back in. And wipe it down. After every paint session that I do, before I change colors or anything, I do that routine you know, all the time. All right, now. Let me take this mask off. I got rubber band marks all over my face now. So, so we got all four of these ready for the next step. So let me get everything prepared for the next step. It's very simple, but I'll explain it then. And uh, we'll go through it. Oh, the other thing you have to do is clean off your, your steering stick. There's some lacquer thinner there that's on the paper towel or whatever and it's done so the next step um, I'll be filming here very shortly I just have to let this stuff dry for like an hour maybe and then I can do the next step all right so in this session um, it's not gonna be very long it's just an explanation nothing to really show um, I'm gonna the the models are dry they've dried for about an hour and I need I want to protect the paint on them um, so I'm going to put, I have a mixture, uh, this is a satin varnish, I was, I was wanting to put on a, um, a semi-gloss, but I don't have any gloss to mix with the uh, Tamiya flat varnish, so I have some that I made up a while ago and it's a satin varnish, it's a, a two-thirds flat, one-third gloss, so that'll work fine too. Um, all I want to really do is protect the paint. I don't want to put a gloss varnish on it. I just want to put a um, protective coat, uh, satin varnish, before we move on to the next step. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to get. I'm not going to do the underframe. There's not going to be any chipping on the underframe. You wouldn't see it. It's kind of pointless. Um, so I'm not going to do that. Just on the um, upper surfaces. Now, for two of these cars. Uh, we'll do maybe some like uh, hairspray chipping for one of them I'm going to do salt chipping and for the other one I might do a combination of a few so let me get at least all these cars uh, clear coated alright so prep work for the day is done um, I've got the satin varnish on it and in the uh, previous clip I had mentioned I wanted to put a semi gloss on but actually the satin varnish works or actually the finish to the satin varnish is exactly what I was hoping for and it's what I will use um, that's two-thirds Tamiya um, flat base and one-third Tamiya gloss and it give me this finish on the model let's see if we can get some light in on this so you can see it's got kind of a, a little bit of a shine to it but it's it went really well um, put it on wet don't you know you know get up close maybe an inch inch and a half away and put it on not you know don't pull your airbrush back and let it mist on it'll it'll uh, get a rough surface and it'll cloud up a little bit but you put it on wet and and that's what you get so I really like that that's the uh, finish I'm gonna go with at least on this experiment and if that works that is what I will stay with so now I've got the cars prepped or the beginning steps done. I've got them prepped for the chipping, what's going to happen with the chipping. So I'm going to let those cure overnight. I really like that satin varnish on there. I think that's going to work out really well for what I want to do with the car or for any pre-chipping step. Um, so right, like I said, I'm going to let them cure overnight, let that paint harden up or that clear coat harden up really good so whatever I put over the top of it is not going to want to eat down through it. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go um, put some decals on these GP35s and um, wait for you know tomorrow or the next day to get to the uh, gondolas. Now I think that's a, one of the steps I was avoiding when I was doing weathering before was the waiting for things to cure or for the weathering you know one of the layers to dry or whatever. I just wanted it done I was like I just want it done and move on to the next one but I don't I think what I need to do is to step back do some weathering put it aside work on another project 
and just kind of do it in combination like that and I think that might work well. There's some things with weathering you can just blow through and get it done. Other things are going to take a while. So I need to get that through my head that uh, weathering isn't something you just get everything done in one sitting. So I'll get on to the Jeep 35s, hopefully get those done soon. And I'll come back at you when it's time to work on the gondolas again. So thanks for watching. Um, I hope you enjoy following through with this one, or I hope that I follow through with this one. Um, and it's a new start for me uh, into weathering.